throw his hands up in my hair and just pull the top of my hair while we had it. Fixed. So it, it was like really weird. But we're not together anymore. I done pressed charges and everything on him after he choked me that day. Because remember, I had brought that up to uh, in Meet Me Live that day. But he choked. Wait, wait. That, now this is mean, now you, I, I he was, choked you. Yeah. During sex, but he also choked you. Like why y'all wasn't having sex. All you have to do is stay a minute, just take your time. The clock is ticking, so stay. All you have to do is stay. Yes, sir. Late night. But it's all good though. You know, I gotta I gotta get it in when I can get it in, you know what I'm saying? We're truck drivers out here. We don't we we don't have no nine to fives. We we don't do nine to fives. We do we we do twelve to we do twelve to fives. We do five to fours, four to eights. We do it all out here, you know what I'm saying? But um I'm here, you know. It's, it it is what it is, y'all. Well, my name's Locked Out Men. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate you guys being here. And welcome back to the Lockout Man Podcast Show. And tonight's episode is another late night interview. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I had the pleasure of meeting this young lady via my girl, Nifa Nee. We all came together into uh, Nifa's live feed and uh, chopped it up. Had a good time. And she, yeah. and she said that she would like to come on over to uh, the Lockout Men podcast show to share some of her uh, experience with us. And that's what it is. That's what it is. That's what's up. All right. And if you guys like content like this and more, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell and that all button. I really don't need to start telling you guys this because you already know what to do. But if you uh, want to support the channel, you can do that as well. The coffee app and the cash app is in the description below. So without further ado, man, we about to go ahead and uh, bring this young lady on. Now, I don't want to beat up the name, even though the name is simple. But I think the last name is <laughs> is Codwell? Codwell? It's Cowan. 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 Mm -hmm. Cowan. Monica yeah. Cowan to the show. Hey. What's, up? <laughs> What's happening? What's happening with you? What's what's going well, on? Well, hello there. How are y'all doing? How you doing, Mr. Lockout Man? I'm doing good. I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. You know, just uh had some had some issues within the last uh, 48 hours. You know what I'm saying? It was a bunch of, oh, yeah. yeah, it was a bunch of bullshit. But, um, you know, I made a, I made a, I made a what's your name? Uh, I, I made a vlog of it. Made a so, good day out of it? Well, I didn't make a good day out of it, but I, yeah. I made, I made a vlog of it. And, you know, I'll go ahead and chop it up, edit it up over the weekend. And then I'll have it as one of the content content for uh okay. next okay. week Sounds you know, good. to show you guys what what being hemmed up for damn near 10 hours is all about you know what i'm saying so oh, wow. what about yourself man uh so in you know me and you was talking to each other in uh you know in the background yeah. and i mean you mm -hmm. uh you you I had an awesome day today. So let's uh let's start at the beginning, man. Like, you know, where you where you come from. I did. Yeah, where you come from and okay. and uh what's what's your what's your background like? Okay. So I'm originally from Memphis, Tennessee. Um I've been in Dallas outside of Dallas, Texas since two thousand and twelve. Um, I'm a single mom of three boys. Um See. I've been married before I'm divorced. Um, I used to have a catering business and then working these dead end jobs, I kind of got tired of doing it. And then, plus, trucking runs through my mom's side of the state. I was like, okay, I'm getting tired of working, you know, working these nine to five, 
not being appreci- you know, not being appreciated for what I do. Mm-hmm. When I come in, it's like people don't care. So I decided to say, okay, you know, I told my mom what that said. I want to get my CDL. And she chuckled and she thought it was funny. So up until I quit my job, mm-hmm. I walked out my apartment so that she could be able to watch my children for me. And then next thing you know, I went into the truck. And it took me a minute because, you know, it's like different strokes for different folks. You know, some people may go in and get their CDLs in two to three weeks, or some might, you know, take a, a longer process for them, which I was one of the ones with the longer process, but I made it. Um, I've had my CDL now for almost, well, for two years. I had to stop driving truck for a minute because I lost my babysitter, but um, my mom, she's very supportive of me. She's helping you know, meet with my boys and my sisters and brothers. They're helping me. Well, let me so now I'm back on the me, truck. Let me let me back up a little bit. We 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 going we, okay. we cruising along here. Uh, <laughs> I got so, I I talk fast. <laughs> yeah yeah I yeah I noticed that I noticed that. Um, so back back up a little bit. You you was doing uh you know odds ends and dead end jobs and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Um. Yeah. And you said trucking runs on your mom's side of the family. So was your mom a trucker or something like that? Or was your mom's husband? Or? Uh, no, actually, my, her dad, her dad and all of my uncles and cousins, and they're all guys. So basically, I'm the first female truck driver in the family. Oh, okay, okay. So what did your, what, yeah. how, how did your my mom? My mom would never. How did your mom take it when you told her that you was gonna go and get your CDLs? She was she was excited about it, but then again, she thought I was just talking. You know, how sometimes you say things and you really don't mean it. But at that point, I really meant what I you know what I wanted to do. So at that point, when I told her, I said, "Mom, will you watch the kids?" You know, mm-hmm. I went to school, went to ATDS out in Waco, which is Waco, Texas. And I went through Snyder. So Snyder paid for me to go to school. And once she seen how I went through school and was driving and making videos of myself backing and stuff, then she knew then that it was real. It finally had hit her. So she's very excited for me. You know, I just really appreciate her for, you know, having my back through this. Cause it, it was really hard. So now it's, I'm back on the truck again. Um, I've been a couple of times. All right, so you you went to so you moved so you originally is from uh, Memphis, Tennessee. What was life like? Mm -hmm. What was life like in Memphis, Tennessee? And what was what was the the gravitational pull down to Texas? Oh, okay. So Memphis, I was born and raised there. No, I'm an '80s baby. Mm-hmm. Um, I lost my dad there because my dad died when I was like three. I watched him drown, you know, of course. He, it was just a story behind that. But Memphis is okay, very hood. Uh, a lot of celebrities live there, so I know a lot of rappers. You know, like Yellow Bees, yeah, I'm cool with him. Um, Moneybag, yo, he's from there, yo, Gotti. You know, all of us, we went to school together and stuff. So it's pretty much like everybody knows everybody shout, there. It's shout a out, community. Shout out to Moneybag, yo, man. You know, um, Moneybag, yo, is is family affiliated, y'all. Now, y'all probably might not be yeah. going to believe this and all like that, but my 17-year-old cousin has made... He's the youngest producer that signed to Moneybag Records. He's the one that makes. Oh, wow. He's the latest uh, singles that's out now. That's number one on the charts with uh, Moneybag Yo and the mm-hmm. and the rest of the and the rest of the gang. My my seventeen year old cousin produced all those yeah. all those hits. So. Shout that out! That's good. And definitely. I, congratulations shout out. to him too. Yeah. Shout out to Money Bag. Yo, my cousin, my seventeen year, uh, year old cousin's name is uh, I am Drum God. You can check him out on Instagram. Oh, yeah. You can check him out on Instagram. He has a fan page. I am Drum God fan page. And yeah, that's uh, that he was. As a matter of fact, why well, it's unfortunate what happened 
uh, in Las Vegas uh, with Young Gotti's, Gotti's, I mean, um, um, yeah, Yo Gotti. Yo not Yo Gotti. Uh, Money Bag Yo's birthday. Uh, down. Oh yeah, yeah. He was. He was. His birthday yesterday. Yeah. He. He was in. Uh. He was in Las Vegas, and some ill shit went down in Las Vegas. But it had me. I heard. It had me to call my cousin. You know, his father. I had to call. I had to call his father to make sure that he was all right. And he was telling me he was like, "Don't worry about it, cause we was up in Atlanta making music." So we was like, I was like, "Cool," but uh, yeah, definitely shout out to uh, Money Bag Yo, man. So you you know or you yeah. you know or you knew of Money Bag Yo? Well, all of us come from the same hood, so I know of him. And plus, we went. You know, like I know of the and everything that we went through together. And okay. that's just like Young Dow, uh, Dunn Trip, okay. Starlito, okay. uh, Three Six Mafia, okay. Gangsta Boo, that's my cousin on my dad's side. What? Yeah, so I know all of them. That's how small, yes, that's how small Memphis is. Memphis Wait a minute. that small. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Gangsta, Gangsta Boo is your, co- is, is your cousin on your dad's side? Yes. Yes, Lola. Her name is Lola. Um, I, I love her. I haven't talked to her in years. You know how you have yeah. that family where y'all don't talk as yeah. much, but it's okay. She know I love her. I know she love me. <laughs> she out there doing her thing in Atlanta, and I'm very proud of her. And, I mean, everybody is doing good. So, yeah, Memphis is where all them famous rappers come from. I mean, them, they good. So did they you... good at what they do. We known for cooking. Uh-huh. Yes. So the so the the, it out. the issues with Gangster Boo was kind of mm-hmm. was kind of publicized. What what happened between her and the guys at uh at Three Six Mafia? Uh, was you privy? Yeah. Was you privy to what was going on? Uh, what was going on with well, all no. of that? No, uh, not really. I pretty much just stay out of, you know, like, out of their business and stuff. But, I mean, for the most part, they still close. They still kind of cool. You know, they speak to each other every now and then. And, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know what happened between them. You know, it's just one minute they friends and next minute they not. They supposed to be family, but, hey, you know how they go. Okay. And everybody see different. They see everybody see different, you know, out of eye and stuff like that. So, yeah, they just felt, they just grew apart. That's all. Okay, okay, okay. Rest in peace to Lord Infamous and Kusta. You know, they, they lost yeah. their life. Yeah. So they, they're no longer living. Yeah. yeah. Rest I mean, in peace three six, to them. Three Sis Mafia, man, is, is one of my favorite uh, favorite Memphis groups. Yes. Um, I also fuck with yes. A Ball, A Ball and MJG. Uh, I believe they from, <laughs> I believe they from, ain't they from Memphis? Memphis. No, no. Yeah, they, they are from yeah, Memphis. Yeah, they from Orange Mound. Orange Mound. Yeah. Yeah, I was, that yeah, dude, Orange the, Mound. That's where I'm from, Orange Mound. The dude said that they came from a city that name of an ice cream cake, <laughs> Orange Mound. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Orange Mound. Oh, my God. I <laughs> that's the hood. I was now, tripping. That's the hood right there. <laughs> okay, so you so, so you <laughs> originally from Orange Mound. So coming up as a yes. coming up as a young Monica, how, how was life coming up as a young Monica? I was, I wasn't always good. Um, I was in a game. <laughs> I used to be BL. Um, you know, of course, we all have to grow up and we live and we learn. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't get into many fights, but I was more of a money maker. I like to do her. You know, like I said, I like to do her. I started doing her at the age of 11. And I actually stopped doing her probably around like when I turned 17, like when I, you know, got older. Mm-hmm. And then I did a lot of stuff. Like, I did a lot of stuff. In a, and all my support was actually back home in Memphis. I mean, everybody there supports you. But then again, you have to be careful who you sit down at the table with. Mm-hmm. You know, because those same people that smile in your face, you the ones that stab you in your back. So Memphis is known for that. Okay. I okay. hate to say that. So from from Memphis, uh, Orange Mound, uh, you, mm-hmm. you, 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 you packed up. And you moved to Houston, Texas, or we moved to Dallas. Like outside Dallas. of Dallas, it's um, called Irving, 
Irving, Texas. Irving, Texas. And it's yeah. 30 minutes outside of Dallas. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So yeah. did you already have your been here since. Did you all did you have your kids when you when you moved down there to Dallas or you moved down there before you had your kids? So actually I had two kids already. Mm-hmm. Um my oldest son Montavious, he's now thirteen. And my middle son, Caleb, he's now twelve and then I ended up having a baby once I got here with my ex husband and, and the age is five. Oh, okay. So so luck so luck will have it that all three of your kids is by the same guy. No. Oh. <laughs> no, they're not. Oh. Gabe has his own dad. Caleb and Montavis has that same dad. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah. All right. Uh when you when you got into trucking, uh you know, we're gonna talk about that. But when you got into trucking, uh you you did mention the you did mention that you you lost your babysitter but was the father fathers was around to probably help out help you out while you was you know making the transition to the trucking no the dad's never been there you know even my ex-husband with him staying in the same city and state he's just always been a deadbeat i hate to say that the oldest baby in the middle son they dad has not ever has never been there so um my sister moved back home so that's what i meant by i lost my babysitter but my mom and my nephew helps me with my boys now oh okay okay so your mom so your so you yeah. so you got peoples down in dallas then right mm-hmm. oh okay yeah. okay, mm-hmm. okay my mom everybody came yeah all right so let's get into your so let's get into your trucking story man where you 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 went right. to, you went to school uh you went to trucking school but you went to a school mm-hmm. where uh a trucking company paid for your schooling that trucking company being Snyder Uh-huh that big orange that big orange company called Snyder Mhm mm-hmm. So what yeah. what what made you uh, did you do your research and did you knew that Snyder, I did. You, did you knew Snyder was going to pay for the schooling uh, when you got got mm-hmm. to this particular? Now this is an independent school that Snyder sponsors, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, uh huh. And a couple of other, I think a couple of other places also go to them. I think it's called it's on the tip of my tongue. Um, it's something with the oil field. I can't re- once I remember it, I'm gonna tell you the name of it. But it's another company. It's it's a lot of people, like a lot of they have a lot of contracts with a lot of different companies. Mm-hmm. And um, I was going there, and a couple of other schools were going there, so it was pretty challenging. But they made it work for all of us, and I mean, they were very helpful. I just want to give a shout out to that school because they were very great. Like they took their time, they didn't rush to try to make us feel unwanted. And they took us to this place where we go take our, you know, go take our test for the back and then, you know, to do the pre-trips and stuff like that. It was amazing. It was amazing. It took me actually four weeks to get my CDL. Oh, okay, okay. Now, once you once you got your CDL and everything, you did did you go to Snyder? Yes, I did. I worked for Snyder for six months. Um, that was how I paid them back. You either can work for them six months to a year. And I gave them they six months, and after that point, that's, I was going to continue to keep going, but that's when my sister moved back home, and that's when I had to, like, turn in my two weeks notice to tell them that I was going to have to return, and that's when I left from driving truck. Okay, so you say six months. Yeah. So Snyder only require you to, to, to knock out six months and, and not the full year with them in order to, mm-hmm. in order to fulfill yeah. the obligation? So during the six month period yeah. with during the six month period with Snyder, I, I'm assuming about a month of that was out with a trainer. So what was your experience with with the training there, and your experience with the company as a whole? The company it, they treat their workers really great. I mean, Snyder really cares about their drivers and the trainer. Oh my gosh, I had an amazing time. Her name is Kelly. 
she's actually one of the fun. I think she, I don't know how to say that, but I think that she's one of the people that they have on the videos all the time. If you pull it up, her name is Kelly. Mm-hmm. And actually, she's the only Kelly that's there, but I cannot think of her last name. Actually, she said I did so good. She only kept me for a week. Okay. Okay. So she was like, oh, you did so well. You know, I'm going to take you back and just tell them that you're ready. So I was like, okay, that's fine. Once I got out that truck with her, I got my own truck. You know, of course, you had to go prove to Snyder Drive, you know, the people there, the management and their drive support and people that, um, you know, take you out to do your road test. Of course, you had to go in and, you know, take your road test and all that stuff. That was after all the classes and going out with the trainer. Once I passed my 90, my uh, back and straight line back and everything and mm-hmm. pre-trip, post-trip and uncoupling, they let me go. They put me on my own truck and I was rolling. Now, Snyder has, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, Snyder has a lot of opportunities for, for drivers. They have everything from drive-in yeah. all the way down to intermodal. What uh mm-hmm. what div- what division that they put you in? So I drove for Snyder twice. When I went back, I did um I did refrigerated. Um, I actually worked through a Costco account that they don't have anymore. And the first time I went, I was driving the drive in. Oh, okay, okay. So you didn't have no entrance. Yeah, so I did both. Did you did 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 you uh, uh you ain't had no in, uh, no interest in driving anything else like flatbed, tankers, uh, intermodal. I was thinking about flatbed, and at that point I was gonna be teens with a, a friend that went to school me. But you know, one thing led to another. She ended up going back with her ex, and I was like, you know what? Man, I just need to be by myself because nothing turned out right. Mm-hmm. So. Um, I was thinking about doing flatbeds. They had talked to me about the opportunity to do that, but I never went with it. You know, I just stuck with the drive bed because I felt I, I felt comfortable with that and didn't want to start over at that moment. But I said that, you know, once I get my seat wet and stuff, then I probably go back to flatbed. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. So mm-hmm. so rocking yeah. so rocking out with Snyder. You you say you 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 went there twice. So. Uh, mm-hmm. af- after you got a, you know, uh, after you got your babysitter for your kids, you d- they they let you come back. Yeah. Why did you leave again mm-hmm. if if Snyder was was a good fit for you? So what made, well, excuse me, yeah. what made me leave the, the last time was that they got rid of the Costco account. Costco let Snyder go mm-hmm. because they went. I don't know what happened. I I, I forgot what my driver man just told me. Me and her actually um. Uh, Instagram friends. Um, I don't remember exactly what happened because that was like last year sometimes, like the year before last, September or something last year. Um, something about the runs wasn't worth keeping or the drivers weren't doing their jobs or the company had closed over their own over here in Dallas or something. I, I pretty much forgot what it was. But it was funny how it happened because they didn't tell anyone that they were gonna lose their jobs until a week before the Costco account got demolished, period. Like, Mm -hmm. it was drivers pissed. They were coming out saying, hey, man, I don't know what I'm going to do about my job. It's people that's been driving for these people for 10, 12 years. Mm -hmm. They had to be unemployed because they lost the account with Costco, and they've been running that Costco account for like 10 to 12 years. So Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, well, what the hell do I supposed to be? You know what what happened to me with so I called my driver manager. I said, well, what's going on with the Costco account? She said, well, we don't have the Costco account no more. So remind you, like I mean, I was driving for the Coca-Cola run mm-hmm. when I first started with them. Um, the Coca-Cola runs are not too good right now because I have a friend that's doing a Coca-Cola runs, and he said it, they're not doing good at all. So I was like, oh, okay. well, I just wish you best of luck, you know, whatever. But, yeah, that's the reason why I left the last time, because they got rid of the Costco uh, account, and I didn't want to go back to Coca-Cola. Or did you, did do, would you would have, would you would have uh, went over the road? Yeah, I did. As a matter of fact, speaking of Snyder, uh, I actually worked for Swift, too. I did over the road with Swift. All right. So, with Snyder, though, uh, you you had your training with 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 a female trainer, and you said 
You said being out with a being out with her was was an awesome experience. What was the come yeah. mod, what what is the camaraderie like uh inside of inside a truck with two, you know, with with two women? I mean, two I, yeah, with two females. Okay, so Kelly Kelly was the type of person that, okay, well, I'm going to sleep in the truck and I'm going to get you a hotel. You know, so I didn't experience sleeping in that truck with her because she was the type of person that wanted her own space and I didn't blame her for that. Okay. And it wasn't that she was being racist or nothing, but it's just she was like, I'm not used to nobody sleeping on the truck with me. You know, I'm used to if I have a trainer on here, I, you know, a train, you know, one of my students on her, I just get them a hotel and, you know, okay. Snyder, you know, they reimburse for her money. So, yeah, it, I didn't get the chance to sleep with her, but she did cook for me on her truck. And it was an instant where it was actually me and the lady that's supposed to be a team. Mm-hmm. Her and Kelly had words. So the girl was mad because Kelly kept giving me like, oh, Monica, you, oh, my gosh, girl, you ride, this truck riding so smooth. You have ran over curves. You have did this. And the girl was getting nervous and running over curves and, she was doing all kinds of stuff, like okay, looking well, at her phone okay, while wait, she's driving. Okay, wait, 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 wait. So mm-hmm. y- it, it was two of y'all on the truck being trained at the same time? Yes, honey, it was two of us. <laughs> okay, so two. Snyder, so I I know of I know of CR England uh mm-hmm. that that trains uh two people at the same time and you know they got the 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 three they got the three bunk trucks now they got like two bunks really? up top yeah they got like you know your regular standard two you know double bunks oh, wow. and then over in the cut where uh, where all the extra space that's up at the top it's another mm-hmm. bunk it's another bunk up there and I knew I I, I knew oh, wow. I knew that that CR England trained two people at a time. I also knew that Covenant mm-hmm. Covenant trained two people at a time. I just felt getting trained by a trainer with more than one person. I just felt that the that, that you you can't get trained right. I mean I I felt I feel that one on one training is 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 optimal. But you know, yeah, you know, sit, you know, splitting your time between two people, you not going to get that, uh, right? Get that. So, so you had another female on the truck, but she wasn't. Mm-hmm. She wasn't doing, uh, I guess as well as you, and kind of like what got jealous? Yeah, got jealous or something like that. I'm- I want to say it was jealousy, and you know, for her to be older than me, you know, I just feel like she wasn't being hypocritical, uh, if that's how you want to say it, or she wasn't being like, oh, you're shit, you know, you, you can't do this job. No, I feel like this, when a person is telling you that you're not doing something right, you should want to be better at what they're telling you. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Instead of you getting rude and getting an attitude with her, you on this lady's truck. This lady been driving trucks for 15, 16 years. She know when somebody is doing something wrong or when they're going under the speed limit or when they're nervous. And that's, the, that's what Kanye was doing. She was scared. And instead of her just saying, I'm a little nervous, you know, Kelly, I apologize. I'm just a little nervous. Can you work with me? She didn't say nothing, but you ain't going to be talking to me. I mean, it just went left. It went fucking left. You hear me? It went left quick. Exactly. And she was going to jump on Kelly, but I told her, I said, Tanya, this, this lady can put you off her truck, which that's what she did. She left her right in Oklahoma. <laughs> the people at Snyder had to get her a rental car because Kelly said that she could not ride in her truck. Mm. And I don't blame her, especially when you threaten me like that. Right. So mm. I drove Kelly around for a whole week by myself. I got all my training in. And I actually went back early. She was like, I'm going to go ahead and tell them that you're ready. She was like, because I don't see a purpose of me keeping you in my truck for two weeks. She was like, girl, you, you're you ready. And I was like, okay. And ever since then, you know, I just feel like if a person trusts me to get out here and do what I'm supposed to do, I'm going to continue to keep that same attitude. Okay. You know, because I have to go home to my kid, you know, and I have 
you know, pretty much what Neat Nee to Nee is the one that inspired me to go back to really driving trucks because I watched her. She's so smart, and you know, the things that she do, like she said, I make it look easy, but y'all, it ain't peaches and cream, and that's that's a true saying. I like how she puts it. So you know, and it really inspired me a so, lot. So from Snyder, you 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 stepped away mm-hmm. from you stepped away from Snyder. And uh, mm-hmm. you 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 went over to Swift. Why make the jump from yeah. Why make the jump from Snyder? What made you What, what made you jump over to Swift? Not no. to, not to say a, that okay. not, not to say that Swift is not. And let me get this. Let me make sure I clarify this because I am a proponent okay. of Swift. I mean. Don't get me wrong. Oh yeah, it's 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 unfortunate that they got uh, bad, you know, bad things about them. But it's to me, it's yeah, it's they have bad reputation. Of, yeah, it's because of the drivers, you know, not not yes. per se of the company there you go. itself. But what was your what? Yes. Why you went to Swift? So um, I think I waited a couple of months. I had went back to work and stuff, doing something else, cooking my, doing my catering business. And I said, oh, I'm going to go back to driving trucks. Uh, I decided to just go to Swift because they was accepting people. You know, they, you know, when you call them and tell them you're looking for an opportunity, they they open up the doors for you, you know. And I, I appreciate them for doing it. They all about giving you a chance. So I went with Swift, um, started driving for them. You know, I went out with a trainer. His name was John. Mm-hmm. John actually turned into being my boyfriend. <laughs> a couple of uh, once he uh, took me back to the terminal and I took my road test and passed, and he called and said, "Hey, I just wanted to let you know I had a crush on you." Uh, and I was like, "Huh?" I went, uh, "Remember looking at you like this?" Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, so it was kind of weird because me and this man was in the truck together. You see what I'm saying? Lock out. Uh-huh. And I never had a bell trainer. Yeah, it was weird, but. One thing I can say, he was very professional. He didn't try that with me. He didn't put his hands on me. None so, of these. It was all professional. So you, yep. so you went to train, but yep. I, I guess the guy kind of like held his feelings for for <laughs> you <Yeah>. until <laughs> you you know you you guys got finished training and all like that. Did yes. he did he come back to ask you like the like the team drive with you or some <laughs> shit like that? I mean, uh uh-uh. uh, mm-hmm. so nope. I was in my truck and so he was in his truck. I, I'm about to <laughs> I, I'm about to pull it back on your ass for a little bit because we was just <laughs> we was just in Nifanis, uh, live feed talking yeah about that so. You, yeah, remember I brought that up. Remember, I had brought it you, up to me about me dating the guy that Yeah, me. yeah, you, <laughs> you, you, I, but I, you, you said that you, you like you going back to celibate and shit, but yet, but no, that was a long time ago, though. That was like not, not recent. This is like uh, this, this is like last year sometime. Oh, this oh okay, so this is last year. So yes, what yes. what happened what happened <laughs> yeah. to the relationship between you and the trainer? Well, John, be, we were now together I'm being for nosy. almost a year. Mm-hmm. No, 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 I'm glad because that's what I'm here for. That's why you ask me questions. I'm I'm uh, uh, Okay. Me and John was together for a year. Mm-hmm. And remember when we went back to saying that about the money situation about people paying your bills and the guy paying your bills. He was doing all of that. Oh, that like, was yeah, the was one. Oh, that. that was the one that yes. was paying. <laughs> That's what I was talking wait, wait, about. Wait, wait, yes, wait, 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 wait. That that was the one that was paying all the bills that didn't want nothing from you. Yeah. That was the one? That didn't want nothing from me. That's the one. Yeah. That's the one. Okay. He's, he's, he's a giver. Yeah. Okay. So he didn't give you. Oh, okay. You you didn't give him anything, but you took the money. So we had again, sex. we had sex like quite a few times. Oh, but wait a minute! You made it like you didn't give him none, though. 
No, because remember I had said, remember I said, I said we had sex like once or twice. Oh. Because he's been through a, you know, John wasn't the type that was sexual. Because he has, he's been through a lot in his childhood with molestation. Mm-hmm. So I respected that. Remember I had said that we didn't really sleep around a lot. Remember I had said that he was gone for like three or four months at a time because he was over the road. I okay. mean, when I say over the road, I mean all state. Okay. So I hardly got to see him. Mm-hmm. Remember I had said that on uh, Need to Be Live. Yep. Okay. okay. So. Sure did. So mm-hmm. what happened to the relationship? Like. He, okay. I'm a trip. Yeah. Okay. So you know how they say about Zodiac signs, right? I think that that's I, true. I, I, I try. I, 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 try I, I try not to think of it, but okay. <laughs> it's true. Okay. So, of course, I'm a cancer and he's a Pisces. Oh, um, okay. I'm the type of person I want for my man to call me. You got to think, lockout. Me and him already not seeing each other. Okay. See what I'm saying? Like, you're gone for three, four weeks at a time. Okay. He don't call me. He's good at giving me money. Mm-hmm. He's good at paying the bills to take care of me and my kids. But okay. at a certain point, that don't matter. I, I want somebody to call me. I want to hear your voice. I want that you, you know, I want to know that you care. So he thought that dropping off the money would cover everything. When I tell you every time I call him, I be like, hey, what you doing? Nothing. I mean, he just had like this nasty-ass attitude. And I see why he was paying the bills and, and not wanting to come home because of the kind of person he is. He has a funky-ass attitude, and I'm a nice, quiet person until you piss me out. Okay. So I, it was the let last me, straw. Let I me, had got tired. Let me, let me stop you right there. Did you, mm-hmm. did you, you was on the truck with this man for like, you know, for like, a little bit. Did you kind of like figure that Three shit weeks. out? Three weeks. Three weeks. So did you kind of like figure Three that shit? Did you kind of like figure that shit out beforehand? No, mm. because mm. that goes back to me saying that people can fake it to make it. Mm. Mm. See, he he didn't show me. You got to think. He didn't show me his true colors when he was my trainer because we were just talking professional. We were just only on, on the truck for training. I had no clue that John liked me, you know, until he called me. He said, hey, I was just, I, they told, they uh, sent me an email, told me that you passed, and I'm just really happy for you. This, at this point, he's on my phone talking to me. And I said, well, I appreciate everything you did. Remind you, he's white, I'm black. Uh, I mean, he was a really nice person, but sometimes he'll have this attitude like he, he's bipolar or something. I don't know. Um, But he'll, he'll call, and, you know, he called, and he's like, well, I'm glad that you passed, and I have something that I need to tell you. So I was like, what? I said, I'm here. You know, we can talk what's going on. He said, Monica, I just wanted to keep professional with you. I, You know, that's my job. I never, ever uh, talk to no one, you know, outside my job, like I train or nothing. He was like, well, I have a crush on you. I really like you. You're such a sweet person, and I, I can see myself being around you 24-7. So, you know, at first I was like, uh, you know, like, I don't know about that. And then we started talking and, you know, we started dating. He stayed in Washington. I live in Dallas. You know, so it, it was hard. It was hard. We, Like I said, when he come here for Christmas or something or something like that, that's when we'll be intimate. Well, do we do it? He'll go on back his way. So who, but I, who, who broke it up, you or him? Me. I did. So you 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 broke, I it, broke off. it off. You you broke it off because of that because of the attitude. But yet the man was still giving you cheese. Yeah. So. But that goes back to me saying I'm I'm independent enough to take care of myself. I thank God for that. But the thing is, if you think about it, like that man, you got a woman at home, right? Mm-hmm. And. You wake up to this lady every day. You give her everything that she ever asked for, everything that she wanted. You love her dirty draw. But instantly she get up and she's slapping you. And for no reason, she just get up and bow to slap you. You ain't going to be ready to whoop that bitch ass? I'm you ain't going to be ready to cut her out? No, I'm just going to walk away. I, I, 
if you so walk you, away. That's you what call, I did. I you, walked the fuck away. If you if you uh, you know jump up and and start putting hands on me, then yeah, I, I'm gonna have to get up and go because you know I'm I'm just that type of dude. You know what I'm saying? Now if you're gonna so stop, me, if you're gonna now if you're gonna stop me from not leaving, like constantly, mm-hmm. like constantly hitting me and standing in my face then yeah, yeah I'm probably probably gonna have to shove you out the way but then exactly. when See, but then but then when you ball them hands when you ball them hands up and then you know get in that mm-hmm. get in that fighting stance and then start to you know punch yeah. on me then yeah I, I I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have I'm to the right <laughs> gonna have to. but there's I'm kicking your fucking ass. there's steps <laughs> Now there's steps to all of that though before I get yeah. to that point. You see what yes I'm saying? No. Yeah, yeah, and I understand it as a bit. But you know, that's just I'm just making an example of how much shit you're gonna take from a person when you don't have to. You know, so I felt like you're not gonna be yelling at me or hollering at me. When you come in town, I make sure you're eating. You paying the bills, okay, that's fine. But you're not just because you paying for you're gonna fucking yell at me. So my own my own mama don't even yell at me, so you're not gonna do it. So he just had this stanky, nasty, I mean it was nasty, bitter ass attitude. Then I hang up and he'll call back like hey, like nothing never happened. I'll be like, you know what? I'm done. Like nah, he, I called he didn't he, call he was me bipolar. one day I had to that's, up alone. that's that's what that was. He had a bipolar disorder. So he, Yeah, he was bipolar. He was, my mom even said it. He, he, like, he will be you, cool. Uh-uh. He will be cool I with you one minute. Me. He'll be cool with you one minute, and then flip the script on you on the, on the nets. But yeah, that's, yes, and that's, that's why crazy. I got. I told him, I said, "Baby, you can go on your way, and I'm going on my way." And honey, I'm gonna be honest with you. I just was in a domestic relationship. Um, uh, let me see. I've been single now since May of this year. And it's really sad because the guy that I was intimate with and the guy that I was dating, I grew up with him, and he's from Memphis. I, wait, 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 hold, hold, him wait here. Hold, hold up, wait, wait, mm-hmm. you, wait, you, okay. okay, see, you talking fast, but I'm trying to, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get to, I'm, I'm getting into the middle of what you're talking, so you was okay. dating a guy and you was intimate with another guy. Well, no, it was just Darvell. It was just because at that point, me and John, we already been broken. We've been broken for a whole year. Okay, so you broke up with so with, now, you broke up with trainer guy. Trainer guy is already done, mm-hmm. but you was talking. You was saying that yeah. you was intimate with a guy, and but you was dating another guy. So is it the same guy? Well, no, no, no. I was talking about the same guy. Yes, the same guy that I was intimate with, uh, Darvell. But this was moments after uh, John, because I don't, I don't cheat, I don't do this. Okay, so so like, you was, was on the tail, John, and so, that was it. so you was on the tail end of John, why you was why why you was getting it on with with the new dude, whoever he was. Now the new dude is from Memphis. No, That's no, the, no, no, no. No, okay, okay. No. Oh, okay. 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 So John and me. Me and John been broke up since last last year. Okay, so, so you and John's I done. I wasn't talking to nobody while me and John was together. Uh huh. Yeah, we were done. We way done after you know. Yeah. So I was saying the domestic relationship that I was in was with the guy that I was briefly dating back in May. Okay, so domestic. That's the person I was saying I was intimate with. Cause, okay, yeah. so do that's a new word to me. So domestic relationship what is that mm-hmm. what what is that because it's just like how so domestic, it just like domestic it's just violence? like it's, it's just like how jada pickett smith had to break down that word entanglement break break <laughs> break down domestic <laughs> relationship so what i mean by domestic relationship is like more so like domestic violence but the relationship was domestic. Like, he would put his hands on me a certain way. I would have to tell him, hey, 
I don't like all that choking and shit while we having sex. So one thing led to another. I didn't want to sleep with him one night, and I think that he had some shit going on in his head, like, uh, because his sister had passed. Uh, way before I walked in the picture, she died in a car accident. And you know how you would ask somebody, hey, baby, are you okay? And, you know, do you need me to do anything? Are you, you know, is everything all right? He'd be like, yeah, I'm okay. But see, we had got into an argument and it got real heated. i never forget that night. I stopped the car. He jumped at me and said, bitch, I hit you in your face. This is a, this is a motherfucker I grew up with. Okay, wait, I, I gave a chance oh, to come okay. down here and get his life together. Okay, hold, remember, hold up. Hold up. Wait, wait, wait. Hold up. Yeah. Hold up. Wait. Okay. This cat right here, okay, the the new cat that you mm-hmm. with right now, you don't, so during sets, he likes rough sets. It, it, that's, that's what yeah. it is? Yeah. So he likes rough sets, like um. slapping that ass, choking and all like that. I can't see how a person can get well, into that Well, in the motherfucker shit, shit. I can't see how people could get into that. I don't like but, that shit. I ain't with that shit, man. I'm but, not with it. I'm not with that shit. But he don't pull my hair. Don't slap me. Don't put unless. Well, how how the hell is he pulling your yeah, hair? I'm you not don't, with it. He he you get out it. How is he pulling your hair, Monica? You I don't, don't have, have that much, any hair. You don't have that much hair on your head, so I, <laughs> what, what the hell he was pulling? I know you telling me, <laughs> honey. He was like, "Grab." Okay, so I, y'all just now seeing me like if you look at my picture, like some of my pictures on my hair has grown and some of it ain't. I have cut my hair just recently again, so that's why I look really short like it is. Um, he'll just pull like ball his hands up in my hair and just pull the top of my hair while we had it. So it, it was like really weird. But we're not together anymore. I done pressed charges and everything on him after he choked me that day. Cause remember, I had brought that up to uh, in Meet Me Live that day. But he choked. Wait, wait. That, now this is now he, would, he choked you. Yeah. During sex, but he also choked you. Like while y'all wasn't having sex, like so what he put me. So he put right. so he yeah. he okay so so he put hands on you pretty much. Well, okay, so. Let me see how can I put this. Okay. Okay. So after the fact that I've talked to him and told him I don't like it, right? Right. We had an altercation. We got into it really bad one day. Well, just because you told wait, 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 wait. Just because you told him just because you told him that you didn't want to have no sex? Yeah. Yes, and then we got into it about that. And then he said, he said something. He's like, "Fuck you, then. I might well, I might as well go ahead and move on back to Memphis if y'all want me touching you and doing this." I said, "Well, you got to do what you got to do. I don't give a fuck what you do. Okay. I'm already working these crazy ass hours. At that point, at that time, uh, I just quit my job at American Red Cross because it was it was stressful. That's a whole other story. I was doing phlebotomy for them, and he was at home with the kids, and I was always at work. So, um." He was, I trusted him around my kids. He was really good with my kids. My kids never saw any domestic signs from him towards me. He was really good to my kids, and he was also kind of good to me at times. But it's just that he slipped the fuck out, and I guess one thing led to another, and he jumped out the car after I told him, don't jump at me no more. He jumped out the car and choked me outside at my apartment and slammed my head against the door. Okay, then that means it was time to go after that. But how long you it was you, time to go because I almost shot him and everything. You you mentioned that the dude that you knew the dude yeah. for a hot minute down in Memphis and you brought him you did you bring him yeah. to Texas or did he did did he bring he he came to he Texas on his here. own on his own dime? He I, I sent for him, you know, and he got on his feet. Now, he did have a job, but it wasn't paying what my job was paying me. He was going to make like $10 an hour. But until he found out that, you know, until he got a job, I was paying out the bill. So I had to hold that food down. I had to hold that everything. That's just how I was trying to show him that I cared for him. 
you know, and then he showed me portions of it back when he got, you know, started working and stuff. He was paying the bills and buying me stuff and, you know, this and that. But, he, you know, after he done paid the bills, he broke because he was making nothing but $10 an hour versus me making $19 an hour. You know, so I, I just think it was just a lot of stress in the situation with me and him. And he probably was feeling less of a man because he seen me coming in with all kind of shoes and I have to pay all the bills and I'm taking care of the kids. And I just think that he pretty much started feeling less of a man. You see what I'm saying? And it kind of started stressing him out. But I just feel like no matter how you feel, that's no reason for you to put your hands on nobody. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You can talk shit out. You don't have to make it a domestic situation every time. Well, you that's see, how a lot of us black people lose our lives because see, that's they a, think domestic is the is the answer. That's see, see that's how, how yep. can I put it? See, that's that's what it is with with with, with dudes that has issues. I I, yeah. I think it's mental. I think it's mental issues mm-hmm. that they they getting you I know they so they, they girl they girl is making more money than them. They not bringing nothing to the table, and they just feel like you know they yeah. they you know they get all up in their feelings. And, you know, now it's like, you know, you try to talk to him or you you try to do this and you try to do that. And he just feels intimidated mm-hmm. by you and all like that. And that's where the and that's what it was. And that's where the the violence and stuff like that comes into play. Yeah, and, that's yeah. what happened. We had talked about it. And once I got him locked up. Police had locked him up and took him to jail. I have not heard from him since then. So oh, okay. it's been it's been since May since I heard from him. Okay. Um, yeah. So a lot of life lessons is being learned here tonight. So. Uh, yes, they yeah. are. Yeah. Uh, hey, we we kind of like got off the rail. So let's get back right back on it. So back in the truck. Hey, right, you. That's okay. Back back in the truck you are, <laughs> back in the truck you are, uh, mm-hmm. Rico Williams called D Nitty D Kitty. <laughs> uh, back in the truck you go. So have it ha, ha, has it been um, has it been uh, relatively smooth now that you uh, now that you got back in the truck and you know we 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 went off the rails when we was over yeah. at Swift. You know what I'm saying? We, we was over at Swift. So what was your experience over at Swift? I drove over the road with them. Um, my driver manager, she actually was based out of Idaho. Mm-hmm. Even though I was in Texas, um, she her name was Lisa. She was a really good person. I met her through John. It was actually my ex-boyfriend's driver manager. And once I got with her, she liked the how I drove. And she was like, I'm just grateful that you, you know, a careful driver. You come to work, you do what you're supposed to. And I was gone for like three to four weeks at a time. So I was making a lot of money with Swift. And that goes back to people saying that Swift is shitty. No, like you said, it's not the job. It's the people. It's the people behind the the wheel. You know, it's not the company because them people are really good to you there. I'm not going to lie to you. Swift treats you good as hell. I wanna, I wanna, uh, I wanna revert no, back. Don't believe the hype, y'all. I, I wanna, the hype. I wanna revert back on a comment right quick. Rico Williams says that, uh, yeah. he says that I'm not gonna say the N word, but he says that uh, a person, a, a dude that fights, <laughs> he said that a dude fights uh, women won't fight, uh, won't fight no real men. That's facts about a that. man. Yeah. He showed the honey. Mr. Williams, you are absolutely right. Yeah, that's fast about that. He said that. He absolutely right. Yeah. He's not lying. Um, Ain't that sick? That's a <laughs> sick, twisted ass way. <laughs> that's what's up. All I'm right, so honey. so now I like you, I like how he put that. <laughs> so now you 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 jump back in the truck and actually you got back in the truck today. So is is this is this? Yeah. Is this? Your own truck, or you you rocking out with a company? Where where, where are you in your trucking uh, career now? So, this is 
where I am today. I have a friend that I met in Snyder. His name is Michael. Uh, his company is called Robertson, uh, Robertson Hughes. He's a pastor. He has his own church. He's from Fort Worth, Texas. And he asked me to drive for him because he met me through Snyder. He know I'm a good driver. And he made me an owner-operator up under him. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm an owner-operator. Oh, oh, wait. Hold up. This this dude, another dude that you met, mm-hmm. he's, <laughs> a, he's a pastor. He's married, man. <laughs> it don't mean shit. He's a pastor. <laughs> he met you at Snyder, and he just up and gave you, he, he just up and gave you a truck to be a, a owner operator. So it's the truck. Now, it's the now truck. Prior to us knowing each other now, is the truck yours or is it his? It's his. Okay, it's it's his. So is he got two trucks? Okay, so, Monica, how the hell you're on an operator if it's his own truck? Now, the truck is here, but I am, I'm paying, you know, for it to be mine. You know how you do that leasing operator? You, okay, feel, so you I'm leasing. I'm used to trying to know how to. So you leasing the truck yeah. from him? Uh-huh. Okay. So technically, yep. you're not an owner operator yet. You're just a lease. You're leasing the truck and paying yeah. paying him for the truck. I'm getting there. You're paying him for the truck and you paying for all of your mm-hmm. own expenses. So you're a 1099 driver, and you're you're paying your own fee. 1099. You're paying your own fuel and all like that, right? Well, no. He paid for my fuel because he gave me a fuel card today. But it, it, are you yep. sure? Are you sure he's paying for the fuel, or, or, mm-hmm. or is he taking the fuel out of your pay? There's a difference. No, he paying for it because he told me about it. He was talking to me about that earlier today, did. Uh, it's not coming out of my pay. He pays. He pays for that. Okay, so he. Mm-hmm. So okay, so working, so driving for an owner operator to buy one of his trucks. Mm-hmm. Uh, how how is that working? I mean, like, I mean, you, I mean, you, you met this dude at Snyder, but he turns out to have his mm-hmm. own trucks. He turns out to have his own trucks. He, and yes, he, he yes, reached, got his own company. And he he reached out to you of all people to come and dr- to, to to come and quote uh, and quote unquote rent a truck from him. Am I safe to say that? Well, actually it was another it yeah, it was actually another lady driving for him, you know, driving the same truck. That's what I'm gonna get do clean it out now. Uh huh. And wipe everything down. He had to let her go because she would start driving from Dallas. Now, her load is like 500 miles, pretty much what mine was today. Mm -hmm. He said that when she would drive out, as soon as she drives at least an hour, she'll shut down for the rest of the night. He said he was like, wait a minute, what are you doing? How are you going to shut down when that load has to be there at a certain time? And then she would always say she's sleepy, she's tired, and then... She would always want to take the trailer and the tractor home. And he just said that he just got tired of her trying to use him and stuff, so he let her go. Now, that goes back to me saying, Michael, I've been knowing Michael for two years. Like, I, I'm cool with him and his wife. His wife is cool, too. So I don't just talk to Michael. I talk to his wife, too. Oh, so it's like we're all, like, a little family. You know, we're just really cool. Yeah, yeah, it's nothing okay, like Okay, uh-uh. so, but still... You know, I mean, I mean, you know, you, you know, you know. But you know how they go. You do know it's men that her like it, and you know it's females that her like it too. So yeah. I ain't like it. So it's look. So all it's all about. So, man, so it's all about. Me, he got so, a gap. so it's all about what what this pastor do. It's all about. It's 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 all above board. Mm-hmm. It's all above board, and it's all about business. 
with with this pastor dude. Who who do, get, who do you get your who 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 do you get do you look do you look on the low board for yourself or does he do it or does his wife uh dispatch you? How how that works? Both of them. Um, both of them actually, because I was sitting in a truck with him yesterday because yesterday we was getting some decals put on his truck. You know, the the, um, the labels and stuff where you can name your own truck, you know, your own company and stuff. Right. I drove this truck and he drove his other truck and we went to the place and got all that done and we sat down and looked at the load board together. But he picked the loads out, him and his wife. Oh, okay. And he just yeah. sent so they it. Said, like today I went from, yeah. He sends it over to you to, mm-hmm. to, to and to uh, drive the brokers. It. Yep. So what yes, if? Sir. So being yes. that this, so this being that mm-hmm. this is a is being that this is an owner operator. You know that's you know that's running his own mm-hmm. you know his own company, and you're driving for him. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm trying to figure. I'm I'm trying to figure. I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to vision this in my head. Like, is that is is it's that going is that I've is that going to be is that going to be a how do you manifest that into a future with 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 this guy? You know what I'm but saying? Then, I don't know. I'm just you know like right now I'm just going with the flow. Okay. Um, I'm I'm like I don't mind doing it. Yeah, I'm I'm doing it because he just want me to like keep going with my career, pretty much. Okay. You know, he called me. He said, "Hey, Monica, um, I got my trucking company started, and I haven't talked to him because I had been working at American Red Cross, which I was working crazy ass hours." Mm-hmm. So I said, "Well, you said you was gonna get your own company and stuff," which this man was talking about this two years ago. So he manifested in it, and he got his own truck. He got his own truck. The man owned a church. He got money. You know, so him and his wife, his wife was a nurse. You know, she's the manager over all the nurses, you know, whatever they call it. But, yeah, they got some money, honey. Oh, okay. Black well, couple. That's... They stay out in Red Oak, Texas. And, I mean, they doing good to me. And he's he's a pastor with, with his own church and trucking company and all like that. Uh, this sound like this like this sound Rider like. got the most stuff going it, on. It sounds like Kerflo Dollar over here. <laughs> yeah, that might he oh, got hey, he got some man. money. He, I ain't gonna lie to you, man. He he got money. Oh man, he got money, honey. I ain't gonna lie to you. He do real good for himself. Cause yesterday we were calling around, right? Uh huh. And when well, he was calling around, I was too busy doing other stuff. And he came to my truck and he said, "Hey, Monica." Um, can you call this number for me and see if they have it in trailer? So I said, okay, you know, I'll call and see for you, whatever, whatever. And he had his wife calling somebody else, too. So we all all three calling around, and then the guy said, well, yeah, man, I don't have any trailer or something here for rent or something like that. And he said, well, how much how much you asking for him, you know, for cash? And the guy was like, well, for 2016, about 20000 or 16000 and Michael was like, oh, okay, then, well, I'll be up there tomorrow. I okay. wish I could say that shit. <laughs> That's so, what I said. All right, then, well, I'll be up there tomorrow. So people, so, so people yeah, get in. Yeah, he it like that. I don't know. So people get into, people get into trucking for, for various reasons, uh, different goals. Being that yeah. you, being that you linked up with, uh, with Kerflo Dollar over there, the pastor, What's what's your overall goal? Pastor Kerf, what, what you call him? Kerflo Dollar. <laughs> my goal is to just be. Yeah, there we go. That's his name. I like that. My goal is to just be successful, you know, and be safe while doing it. Mm-hmm. You know, being able to provide for my kids. You know, being able to be the woman that I want to be, and probably later, of uh, owning my own truck as well. You know, I just want to keep continuing to get my feet wet. I'm just thankful that Mr. Michael gave me the opportunity to drive for him. Shout because, out. you know, he could have picked someone that's, you know, more experienced. You know what I'm saying? That had like 10 years, 12 years. But he trusted me to come here and do what I'm supposed to do. And as I was telling you before we got on here, remember, I said, I don't really drive at nighttime. Okay. You know, he didn't let me down with giving me a chance. So I didn't want to let him down. You know, so- and that's just what kind of person I am. So, I, I would work my ass out. 
so, I, so so you've been in the game for for about two years or uh, is it two years total or is it more than yep. two years all right so you've been in the game for uh two years i want to say Go ahead. You say you you what now? Two years. Uh -huh. oh, okay. So you've been in the game for two years. No, I was listening to you. I was just I was just coming with you. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Um, being that you was being that you was out here, uh, for for a little bit, you you mm -hmm. came across the you you worked to get you worked across different uh trucking companies and all like that. How do you how do yeah. you keep how do you mm -hmm. keep from getting uh? how do you keep from getting discouragement from from other truckers or uh or from shippers and receivers and stuff like that how do you get how do you keep from getting discouraged well like i don't know i guess i just don't focus on the negative stuff you know like you can't take that shit home with you you can't focus on negativity especially by in this industry driving this big ass machinery you have to be humble. You have to hold your... Sometimes you have to bite the tongue. Sometimes you have to bite the bullet. You know, and like today, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, to make a long story short, I went to the shipper today, which was UPS. I picked up a trailer from them. You know, like the container-looking trailer? Uh -huh. Um, The lady had an attitude the whole time that I drove in there about telling it coming. That was the trailer. She cussing at the drivers and stuff. You know what I... You know how I go... You know how I get by with stuff like that, I don't have to go home with the motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to think, I've been in customer service like pretty much all my life. I done mm -hmm. dealt with people. I'm a people's person. Motherfucker cuss me, I say something crazy to me, guess what? I ain't got to go home with them. I only got to see them this one time. I might not never see them again. Who knows? So that's how I don't get disturbed by shit like this. Okay, that's what's up. You now never being, you learn. Now, you going to let these motherfuckers piss you off. Now, being that you don't that you know you 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 pride yourself in not driving nights and that's and that's pretty cool you know that's pretty good you know that's a good safe precaution yeah. for you. But um, have you ever been have you ever been yeah. in a situ have you ever been in a situation where you felt vulnerable out here and trucking? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have. What was it? Like when you say that, like what do you mean in what kind of way? Like, you know, that you felt uh that you felt kind of scared being in a being in a you know, in a place that you're not Hell familiar yeah. with or something like that. <laughs> oh yes, sir. I'm not even gonna lie. That's one thing about me, I don't lie. And I feel like if everybody would just tell the truth and speak their mind then we'd probably be in a better situation. <laughs> but yes, I've been scared before. I just feel like when you're scared, you won't make no mistake. You know what I'm saying? Either you're going to make a mistake and you're going to learn from it, or you're going to know to just be careful and not make a, try not to make a mistake. You okay. see what I'm saying? That What I mean by that is pre-tripping, post-tripping, doing what you're supposed to, checking your trailer, checking the locking jaws and all that stuff. Okay. You just got to be very careful about dealing with this big-ass machinery. Okay. What Plus, I want to go home with my family when I'm done with this shit. What about uh, <laughs> what what about some extra precautions that you take out here to protect yourself? Um, I have mace with me. You know, of course, we can't carry. But some people they do carry guns with them. But I'm one of the ones that I keep my gun and stuff at home and in the case locked away. Um, I just pretty much don't say anything to no one. Uh, if it's not a company driver that I've actually driven with or something, or maybe like a yard guy or something, I don't ask for help because you have to be careful who you ask for help. You know, you got these nasty-ass men I heard. You got nasty-ass women I heard, too. So I just get in my truck like right now. Shit, I pee in the cup if I have to because I ain't getting out this truck tonight. You got to do what you got to do. You got to think. You got to be smart. You can't think hard. You got to think smart. So I protect myself. I don't go out here making friends with these drivers. If I see, I watch my surroundings as I walk to my truck. I make sure, you know, you got some evil and mad drivers out here. You also want to make sure when you get through thrilling, you might stand in the thrill aisle for a while. And somebody might get mad and want to pull your kingpin. You know what I'm talking about? So you, you want to make sure you check your trailer before you drive off. 
because I learned that in Snyder because that's how this guy killed his family. He didn't pay attention to what his trailer was doing or he was so busy rushing to put that trailer up on that tractor, that tractor up on that trailer and did not connect the lines or uh, he didn't make sure the lock and dials was around that kingpin. So I don't know if you remember that, but that, that story was kind of scary to me that he killed that whole family. So I just try to go out here and be very safe in what I'm doing. So and plus, I think about my children because I know if my kids lose me, they ain't gonna handle that. You you just mentioned something of, about not bringing your not bringing your gun. You you're leasing on with yeah. a with an owner operator. Why why can't you bring your weapon with you? Mm-hmm. I mean, you he probably I mean he can't say anything to me about what I do because he he told me that earlier today. If I wanted to bring some out of truck, me, hey, that's your truck. You do what you want to do. Um, I just feel like because it's a law, that's the reason why I didn't bring my tr- bring my gun because I'm I'm the type of, I'm the kind of person I don't like to be in trouble with the law, and I just rather go about laws and regulations. I'm all about this. Well, do you? I'm not about do you like have, oh, shit, do you, well, I'm gonna take me a gun because. Do you have your? Uh, I have base and stuff. Well, no. Do you have your your? Uh, your your CCW your your conce- yeah your concealed carry oh yeah then how are you mm-hmm. break how are you breaking the law if you have that I don't know I think the last time um the last time I think I was shit I don't know about the fighter yeah I wasn't the owner operator then I was with a company you know with the company but they were saying that we could have weapons so I just been going with this flow ever since. We can have a knife or we can have mace or something, but we can't have an actual gun, handgun on her. I'm okay with it. I'm okay with not having a gun on her. That's fine with me. But I do carry mace on me. And like I said, when I park at night, I'm in my truck. I'm not getting out of my truck. That's what's I am up. in my truck. So somebody come up in here, they better, they better come with some good shit. Because they ass going to get laid out up in here. I don't need no gun for everything. So being a, being a female... Uh, being a female out here in trucking, mm-hmm. you know, especially in this uh, male-dominated, yeah. uh, male-dominated field, uh, have you, have you ever, have you ever came like, you know, at the fuel island or anything like that? Have you ever came across uh, men that was, you know, disrespecting you, or have you ever been in a situation that you got disrespected by anybody, for, you know, that's in the trucking industry? Okay. No, because, um, well, no, I haven't, nobody, never, no, I haven't had that situation yet. Thank God. All right. That's what's up. That's what's up. Well, Monica, how you pronounce your last name? Codwell? Con- yeah. Codwell. Con- <laughs> Codwin. It's Monica. They Co- count. They Cowing. Cowing. There you go. You get it. Cowing. And if you try, most people be like, I, I just can't get it, man. Nah, I- <laughs> yeah. I, I I try to I try to beat people's names up as pop as much as possible. No, I'm just kidding. You but did I, it right, honey. I thank you. Did you a good job. I you thank you for com- I thank you for coming on and uh, sharing your uh, experience and sharing a little yes, bit sir. of your life about you know about yourself on the uh, podcast. I really do appreciate yeah. it. So you're back on the road. Uh, oh no, and I appreciate you for having me. Uh, thank you, thank you. You're you're back on the road. Your kids is is is, is mm-hmm. being taken care of by your by your family now. Uh, yeah. Shut up, D. Uh, you you back on the road. Your kids is being taken <laughs> care of. Um, what what are your what are your what are your plans for the future as far as uh is, as far as trucking goes. Hopefully it become a wife soon. You know, hopefully I'll be my my uh equal and be married again. I'm not having no more kids because I can't have kids anymore because <laughs> I got my fallopian tubes closed. If there's too much information, um, but I just want to be a good wife. You know, I still want to drive truck, probably retire with trucking and just you know just meet good people in the world. Hopefully we live to see another day. That's pretty much my future. Listen here, man. You 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 just 
You you be throwing like you be throwing the curveballs at a motherfucking life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just telling the truth. So you, I do want to be a wife, you know, again. You no, know, my first marriage was a shit, you know, and I just I just I just love love. I just love being happy. I love being successful and I really love cooking. That's my fucking passion. Okay, so where 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 did this marriage come from though? I mean, you just threw that marriage in there like woof. The marriage. Yeah. Because you said, "What do I look for in the future? I want to be married again. <laughs> That's what I want <laughs> in my future." Oh, okay, well, hey, yeah, be married hey, that's, again. That's, that's, that's one of my. That's 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 the future. I I, I me personally, Don't I've been. Do you want to be married? Uh, no, I've been there and done that. I'm sorry. Been been there, done that. Twenty five years. Oh yeah. Uh, twenty five years separated for seven. Yeah, not not looking forward to get married again. Oh wow! <laughs> so you know, fifty. Ain't that, ain't that sad? You know, it's. I, and then some I, I mean, it probably like it, it oh, probably 50. might be it probably <laughs> might be it probably might be sad for some people. You know what I'm saying? It probably might be sad for some people, yeah. but you know, I, I'm I'm pretty much used to it. You know, I already said I already said in my young years. When, you know, when me and her was together that, you know, I said for whatever reason mm-hmm. and I, you know, I was just speaking facetiously back then. I didn't know later in life it was going to actually happen. Yeah. But, you know, I I said that mm-hmm. I, you know, I, I, I said I'm just going to just, you know, be married the one time and and that's it. You know, lucky, luckily. Uh, when we yeah. separated, my son was already grown, and yeah, we, you know, we still cool to this day, though. Mm-hmm. But it is what it is. So me, that's good. That's, that's, that's a good thing. Yeah, me, that's that's right. not that's not a goal for me to get remarried. So I'm I'm good on that. But if you want to get remarried, so man, are you dating? Am I dating? Well, yeah. <laughs> Who is it? I mean, you know, yeah. I'm are you- a, are you I, dating anyone? I mean, I'm not dating. No, nah, I'm not uh, uh, like what, like dating exclusively or something like that. No, no, not not dating exclusively. Yeah, are you are you with someone right now? No, no, not not exclusively. No, like anybody. Yeah, you yeah, just like yeah, not not exclusively. No, okay. you know what I'm saying. Not not exclusively. I get you. So. But uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, well, I man, say, man has to man has to take care of the it has to take care of the man needs. You know what I'm saying? So you know, yeah. Yes, y'all do. And you know. a woman needs to do her part. But women, you know, women, but but some part, but some of y'all, y'all part, but, but some of y'all <laughs> but some of y'all women kind of like you know kind of like have my head scratching like, well, yeah, you know, I haven't I haven't had none for. <laughs> three four years or you know and i'm like i'm sitting here like what the hell yeah. man what, what y'all been doing for what, what y'all been doing for the for the d all this damn time like i mean the toy can only you know, a toy can only go I'm so far this. i'm just saying i i'm just saying yeah that's I, true i'm gonna say this nowadays you have to be you know it's fucked up you have to be careful about who you Nowadays. True. Because you don't know who they slept with. You don't know who the person they slept with slept with. And I believe in soul ties. And you know, you just have to be careful. And then all these STDs going around. Ain't nobody real no more. They're not going to tell you they got something. <laughs> so I, I'd rather keep my coochie to myself. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I'm keeping my P word to myself. Until you meet your husband. Oh, okay. You don't have some cobwebs, baby. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm going to have some spider webs on my seat. I mean, you know, there probably might, you know, there probably might be some husband material out here in the trucking field or in the uh, in the church field yeah. with your with your man Kerfalo Dollars over there. 
You know what I'm saying? I'm sure he got some men. I ain't that, going to church. Not right now. I ain't not with the damn Corona. <laughs> he probably had. He probably has some. That damn Rona. He probably <laughs> might have some friends that might be interested in you, man. Monica Cowan, everybody. Yeah. Monica Cowan, everybody. And that was good. Oh, man. <laughs> Yay, I had so much fun. I had so much fun lockout. Not a problem. I I I, I, really I had a I had a good I had a good time too, man. So thank you very much for coming on. You know what I'm saying. I, I appreciate you. Yes, uh, I appreciate you coming on. Uh, before I get up out of here, I did uh, have a comment that came through. Uh, Teddy the trucker says, "How old are you?" Okay. I am 36. Okay, you 36, and, and how you, do you? <laughs> Yeah, she says, "How old are you, Teddy the Trucker? Uh, you thirty six, and you got three, and you have and, three and are kids." Are you single? And she want to know if you single, Teddy the Trucker. Yes, I have three boys. <laughs> so she has three. She has three kids, man. So <laughs> just, just saying. And I'm a cancer. I'm a cancer. And she's a she's a cancer. I I don't know what that means, but she's a cancer, bruh. <laughs> <laughs> that means I'm a good person. I'm a big baby, but I'm a good person. Oh. I have a big heart. I give. I'm. I'm more of a giver. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, there, yeah. There, there you go. Him, I said hello. There you he, go. He likes to get to know me. There you go, Teddy the trucker. There you go, man. There you go. It's late night will lock out me in match say? match service. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> if you if Wait, you look, hey, if Teddy if if Teddy want to call me. Hey, you can get him my number. I don't mind. Oh, uh, shit, Teddy. There we go, I'm man. Going. There we go, man. Teddy the trucker. <laughs> What's up, man? There we go. Oh, shit, now. Oh, shit, now. That's what's up. Tell Teddy I'll talk to him in a minute. He, she says she he said, can call me whenever he's ready. She says she, she <laughs> she'll talk to you in a minute, Teddy the trucker. Oh, man. Oh, man. Teddy the trucker. <laughs> My man says he's 56, <laughs> single, and an Aquarius. That's okay. what's up. And oh, remember, shit, now. Okay, okay. Oh, okay, so you can, you can get him my number and stuff, and he can call me when he reads. I'm not going to give him your number. I, 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 look, Teddy the Trucker, <laughs> her her Instagram is uh, Monica, at Monica Cowan. You can go over there and hit her up in her DM, bruh. You know what I'm saying? Make something happen, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Make something happen, bro. <laughs> honey, you have but, the lockout. You have the best night, honey. I enjoyed talking to you. I really did. Not a problem. I appreciate it. You stay safe out there, Monica, and uh, and we'll and I'll get back you with too, you. Friend, I'll you get, too. I'll get back with you. You take it easy, and I'll talk to you later, Monica Cowan. Everybody. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's a wild one right there. That's 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 a wild girl, wild girl, man. Yeah, I don't think you're gonna find too many of these. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> great conversation, man. Great conversation. Yo, if you guys want to come, <laughs> woo! <laughs> if if. You... If you guys, if you guys want to come on and chop it up with me, the Lockout Men, and have fun with me on the Lockout Men show, you you surely can, man. Doesn't matter what time. I mean, it's about what two. It's it's going on two o'clock in the morning, having a good conversation with this young lady, man. Look, if you guys want to come on and chop it up with me, you can hit me up in the Gmail. That's Lockout Men Podcast at Gmail dot com. Or go over to Instagram and hook up with me over there. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate you listening. And if you like content like this and more, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell and that all button so you can get the content that comes directly to you when the videos come out. Or 
when I go live with the LOM community. And speaking of which, the LOM community, mad love for you guys for being in here and rocking out with me tonight, man. I appreciate all you guys that came through, all 10 of you guys. I appreciate the, the, the cash app that just came through. So thank you very much for that. I'm about to go ahead and get me something to drink. About to go out here and do my walking. I know it's like real, real late, but I still gotta, still gotta get my exercise in. You know what I'm saying? I gotta check my glucose levels and all that good stuff, man. So I appreciate all you guys, Teddy, Teddy the trucker, Rico Williams, uh, D Nitty, all you guys. You know what I'm saying? That's what's up. I appreciate all of you. You know, until next time, man, I'm about to get on up out of here. I am your humble host, Lockout Men, and this is the Lockout Men Podcast Show. You guys have a blessed night, and I will come back at you with another video. Peace. And searching, 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 and searching, searching, searching.